Happy Fed Day. It's that time of the month again, and old Jerome Powell hiked another 75 basis points, uh, which is what everybody was expecting. No surprise there. It was completely priced in, and uh, because it was already priced in, everyone went and they bought equities. Yay! It's an example of the inverse of buy the rumor, sell the fact. Um, if there's a rumor, let's say that the Fed was going to cut rates, um, everybody would load up on stonks because they know, ooh, cutting rates is bullish for stocks. And then once the rate cut is actually announced uh, by Jerome Powell, then the market sells off. We saw a lot of this uh, in recent years during you know the Powell era at the Fed. But in this case, Powell was hiking rates, and everybody knew he was going to hike the same amount that he hiked last time. There was no pizzazz. There was no surprise. There was no oohs or ahs. Everybody knew, okay, he's going to hike by 75 basis points. They positioned accordingly. Uh, they sold off some stonks uh, if they if they were want to do that. And actually, I think since the last rate hike, uh, the NASDAQ was uh, – I saw somebody say NASDAQ was up 10%, and I – I'm not, I'm not exactly sure about the S&P, but uh, there hasn't been a ton of, you know, selling in uh, on net, but all else equal, I assure you, people uh, were selling their stonks in anticipation of this rate hike. But then once the rate hike was announced, people could th then go and buy back those stonks because, well, the rate hike's over now, so now you have nothing to worry about. And they bought and bought further still. After listening to Jerome Powell's uber dovish press conference, uh, in which not only did he concur with the White House in saying that we are not in a recession and that, uh, oh, you know, uh, you should be skeptical of Q2 GDP because, you know, oh, it's just the initial number. It could get revised higher later. Um, you know, people put too much stock in all this. You know, the labor market's really quite strong, don't you know? Uh, I mean, look at that unemployment rate. It's really tough to find employees right now, uh, which means that the economy is doing just fine. And that is all well and, well and good. Yes, you would think that the Fed share saying that he thinks the economy is doing great uh, would be good for stonks. It would give, uh, you know, the equities munchers uh, better confidence. It would reassure them and say, you know what? No, we should buy these stonks. Uh, Jerome says that everything's going just fine. But considering the Fed is currently in the middle of a hiking cycle, um, Powell being bullish on the overall economy uh, could in fact be bearish for stonks because it would mean that he is uh, happy to continue hiking rates because he doesn't feel like that they're having a negative impact on the economy. And so he can keep hiking because, of course, inflation is still high. Uh, transitory inflation, you know, is a thing of the past. We're not talking about transitory inflation anymore. It's understood uh, that the Fed, you know, is trying to fight inflation by hiking rates. And if they think that their rate hikes have not had any negative impacts on the economy and that the economy is fundamentally strong, well, then uh, you would think that the stonk traders would be worried. But Powell even thought about this because he did not want to ruin the good mood on Wall Street. Uh, he made sure to add that, uh, you know, he thought that doing these big rate hikes like 75 basis points, that's not necessarily going to be uh, something that they have to do in the future. Uh, you know, the, this 75 basis point hike, yeah, this might be the last one. They might be tapering of the size of rate hikes from here on out. So, you know what? Next month might just be a 50 basis point hike. The month after that, eh, maybe a 25 basis point hike. The month after that, well, maybe there won't be any hikes at all. Maybe there will be a rate cut. After all, Wall Street is pricing in uh, a rate cut um, by 2023, early 2023. And uh, further evidence of this is that the uh, yield on the 10-year Treasury bond uh, fell today despite the Fed hiking rates by 75 basis points, which to me uh, signals that uh, Wall Street feels that we are getting closer and closer to a rate cut. 
that long-term growth prospects are not going to improve. That risk is skewed more towards the present uh, rather than uh, the future. But then again, perhaps my logic doesn't quite line up because maybe I don't have the full story here because I would expect, based on everything I've said so far, that we would see stonks rising and we would see bonds falling. Instead, uh, in the wake of Powell's press conference, uh, we witnessed um, stocks and bonds rise in unison. And by rise, I mean, you know, when I'm talking about bonds, of course, I'm talking about the value of the bond, not the yield. The yield falls. It's just, you know, it's a, something to keep in mind if you're, you know, if you're not uh, a big into the finance stuff. So all in all, today could be viewed as an example of what has been uh, referred to as in the past as a dovish hike. Not to be confused with uh, the much feared hawkish cut. Because as a trader, what happens today is much less important than what is going to happen tomorrow. If you're going to make money trading in markets, you don't want to know what's going on today. You want to know what's going to happen in the future. Because you want to get in front of the shift in the price of whatever asset you're trading so as to take advantage of those future moves. So in closing, the goalposts have been shifted. Now GDP doesn't matter. Uh, GDP is just a number. What we really need to worry about is the very rigged and fake unemployment rate, which doesn't count the chronically unemployed and um, is typically a lagging indicator when it comes to economic activity. Businesses only start to lay people off as a last resort when they're on the verge of bankruptcy, when they don't no longer have the cash to make payroll. That's when you lay people off and that's when the unemployment rate spikes. So by the time we get to that stage in the recession, um, you know, the damage is, is pretty much done. You know, we're not in the process of receding economically. We have receded at that point. People are broke. They're out of money. They're not doing well. Whereas right now, um, things are just slowing down. Most people are still staying afloat. They've had to tighten their belts. Um, they're not comfortable. Things are not going well for them in business. Uh, some of them are even starting to get laid off. But apparently until that shows up in uh, the official you know, Bureau of Labor Statistics report on the labor market and the unemployment rate, we're not supposed to acknowledge that this is a recession. So I guess we'll revisit all this once un the unemployment rate catches up to GDP, because of course we're going to have that second negative quarter um, for GDP. People are going to be laid off. The housing market is falling off a cliff. And we also got pending home sales data today, down 20% year over year. Uh, I mean, it's abysmal. It's uh, atrocious. It's uh, every adjective in the book. Yet the White House and the Fed are going to continue pretending that we're not in a recession so as to coddle Wall Street. That's all this is about. At some point, they will have to face the facts. And at that point, the rate cuts will probably begin. But then again, there is still the problem of recession or of, uh, of inflation. There is no guarantee that a mere mild recession will deal with the problem of inflation. I think that we will probably see a spike in the unemployment rate to uncomfortable levels before we see uh, an abatement of the rate of inflation. It's just what my instincts and common sense are telling me. But you know, when you're when you're up this close, staring a recession in the face, in the midst of it, it's difficult to see the forest through the trees. It is difficult to understand the inner workings of everything that's happening as it's happening or, you know, just before it happens. In time, all these questions will be answered 
and we will learn more as we continue to walk down this path. So, with that said, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.